She was just two and a half years old at the time, but that was 2016. And now she's over eight years old, wherever she is. She's always smiling. She's always giving the attention of anyone around her, strangers. She's waving at people, and people are waving back at her. The gut-wrenching problem is that sweet Ariana Fitz family doesn't know where she is. But those people who love her believe that she is out there somewhere. 100%. I believe 100 uh, that uh, Ariana's alive. She's somewhere she doesn't belong. She belongs home. She belongs with her family. <laughs> For anyone to harm Ariana, I, I don't believe that. I don't think anyone would. But harm is a brutally sad part of this story because Ariana's disappearance is tied inextricably to a story of murder, the unsolved murder of her mother, Nicole Fitz. She was a single mom. She lived in San Francisco. You know, she didn't live in uh, the best situation. You know. Contessa Fitz is Nicole's sister, who has spent the better part of the last six years trying to piece together the mystery of what happened to her sister, found dead by a groundskeeper in a shallow grave covered by a sheet of plywood on an April day in 2016 here in San Francisco's McLaren Park. Contessa recalls with cruel clarity the moment the officer told her about her sister. He says, this is the hardest thing I have to tell you. I don't even let him finish because I knew what he was going to say. And in the blur of that numbing and life-altering news, the realization that no one knew where Ariana was. With barely even any time to process, you know, what we've just been told, we, ha we have to figure out where Ariana could possibly be. Nikki had gone through a housing crisis, basically a housing emergency, and the situation that Nikki had found herself in was temporary. Claire Bonner was Contessa's long-term partner at that time, close to Nicole and really a relative to Ariana. And she's my niece, and she's just a bright, bubbly kid. Ariana had that effect on many people, so much so that it became a problem and one that perhaps explains her disappearance. Approaching everyone and just everyone falls in love with Ariana the moment they meet her. It started in Daly City near San Francisco where Nicole and Ariana moved in with a woman they trusted, a street pastor named Lamasani Briggs, who would look after Ariana while Nicole worked at her job at Best Buy. She would criticize Nikki for, over private matters that Nikki had never talked to Lamasani about. The only reason Lamasani would know about any of that would be going through her virtual diary on her laptop. And then something happened that could have happened to anyone who spent time with the adorable and engaging Ariana. She also became very possessive of Ariana and would call Ariana her, her child, her baby. Ariana had this effect on people where they kind of became possessive of her. She just, uh, she has a very magnetic personality. Then there were new babysitters, Briggs' nieces, and things, though, soured there as well. They would have excuses as to why they weren't available for um, Nikki to come and pick Ariana up. Perhaps everyone thought these people had also grown possessive of Ariana. Co-worker and friend Michael Jacobo spent Nicole's last day with her. I had just started a new job at uh, the Conservancy, uh, National Park Conservancy, which actually she be working on Alcatraz. Uh, she wanted to join me because I was going to pick up some things for my first day of work. From there, they made a few stops, and Michael dropped Nicole off at the home where she was staying with roommates. The roommate says almost like five minutes after she comes home, she goes back out. Her roommate saying that a text message from the babysitter drew Nicole outside, and that was the last time anyone saw Nicole Fitz alive. But the next day, she never calls, never contacts anybody, and her roommate called back, calls back again and says that she has not called back. Then they called the police. That was six years ago, and there are still no answers. People need to look out for this little girl who's eight and a half now, and she can be in plain sight. If Ariana's found, what would you tell her about her mother? You know, I would let her know, you know, you, you probably had the best mom in the world. Contessa Fitz is holding on to optimism and doing it for both her sister and her niece. Nikki would want nothing more, nothing more than to know that Ariana is home with family. 
Um, and for Nikki, for Ariana, we can never give up until we find Ariana. Marty, Marty, the uh, you know again these these stories are so difficult. Uh, the San Francisco Police Department is offering a one hundred thousand dollar reward, and Best Buy, the company where Nicole work, is still holding on to hope that they will find uh, Ariana somewhere. They've offered ten thousand dollar reward, and that reward uh, as con was confirmed to us even today that it's still a reward six uh, six years later, six years after this happened to Nicole and when uh, Ariana disappeared. Appeared. So the mystery uh, keeps going, and that's why we do these stories to keep the attention on these kids and these missing people. Marnie? Such a delightful, beautiful little girl. Uh, let's hope some eyes on this story tonight help with the investigation. Michael, thank you. And if you have any information on the whereabouts of Ariana Fitz, call the San Francisco Police Department. We have that number on your screen. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.